my name is Jessica Renee, and I'm a telepathic animal communicator. In this series of videos, I will be looking at global mass animal deaths. The animals involved have a story and a message for humanity, and are going to great lengths to draw attention to important issues worldwide. We honor the animals by acknowledging them and listening to them with our hearts open, and then directing our love to assist them in healing that which comes up. Thank you for your time and participation. Cows in Mongolia have been dying in mysterious mass animal death events since the year of 2000, with over 20 million herding animals presumed dead. I went ahead and connected with the cows in Mongolia and asked them to share their story and any insights that they might have about what's really going on. Here is what they had to say. Thousands of cows wait for me all black, but a black with white cow stands in front, wishing to speak for them all. She has long hair and beautiful horns. I feel the cows are stoic, concerned, dejected, tired, overwhelmed, in misery, Mongolian spirit reversal of defeat, loss, no faith, light in eyes has dimmed. I ask, cow, what has happened to you all? Cast aside, forgotten, trampled, stuck in the mud, haze, confusion, removed. We are the Mongolian spirit. We are great warriors, protectors of our own, our history, our origins. We have been left behind, dejected. We are not revered or treated with respect. We question ourselves what has happened. I ask, can you tell me what happened on March 2nd, 2020, when so many of you lost your lives? We were forgotten, made into a commodity. We used to be respected at least, but not now. Now it has become disgusting, sickening. We left in mass because what is the other option? Our fate is sealed and our sacrifice not respected. How is it we are worth more dead? This way it was our choice. We retain our dignity. We are Mongolian spirit embodied. I ask, why have the people of Mongolia fallen so hard and far from their roots? Made to be lazy, rejected from society, beaten down, forgotten. To forget is to strip one of their purpose, of their will to carry on. To refuse to acknowledge what has come before creates a heavy burden for one to carry. We've been shouldering the load, but the weight is too heavy for us. I ask, how can this be resolved? Spirit must return, must be rebuilt. Unity must come back into play. Family it has been dissolved, must be reclaimed. Substances, alcohol, have been used to block the people from themselves. We must take it back, move into a space of oneness with the land and with ourselves. I ask, do you like being called cattle and raised for your meat? No, we are a noble, proud being who has so much more to offer. We too have been subjected to ridicule, condemnation, and disrespect at the hands of closed minds and those who too have been beaten down. Let us raise up together, regain our power together, form a new way of living, of life which is sustainable now. I ask, news sources claim you died of cold weather. Is this true? There are things unseen happening to the landscapes which are foreign to us. The air and the sudden changes are unnatural and unlike what we have known before. Something is off. On our already burdened shoulders, it is another added level of muck we must deal with. I am not alone in my disbelief as to the naivety and refusal to see that plagues humanity. Yet our death was a choice, 
and it mirrors the spirit of Mongolia and those which languish there. We call to the spirits of our ancestors, those who are before us, to assist humanity in this time, to help humanity be brave, courageous, and willing to fight for what they truly believe in. We will be victorious. Connect to the spirit of the Mongols. Allow no one to impede your course. See things for what they are. Take no prisoners, but do it all in love. We love you. Thank you for listening and hearing us. So when I finish a connection and a reading, I like to look up the place that I connected to. I like to keep a very clear mind and not know anything about the area prior to my connection. And I unabashedly will admit that I did not know much about Mongolia. So first I looked up to see where is Mongolia. Well, Mongolia is situated right in between Russia and China, which is pretty interesting when you look at the information that came up later on as I was researching. So Mongolia sits right there in the center. They have a pretty large landmass as well. And I decided to start looking up some of the stuff that the cow brought up to me um, that is currently impacting the people that live in Mongolia. And one of those was alcoholism. So I looked up, does Mongolia have an alcohol problem? And it turns out they actually have a huge alcohol problem. In fact, vodka is cheaper than milk in Mongolia. So this is definitely something that's impacting the people. So then I decided, okay, well, let me look up what the poverty is like in Mongolia. You know, how are the people? What is the quality of life? And it turns out that it's not very high. Um, the poverty is very high. The quality of life is low. And there's a lot of lack of ability to create income, um, especially if you live in the more rural areas and you're outside of the cities. So there's been a push to push people into the cities. And we always find with cities, there's going to be more rampant addictions, drug use, alcohol use, and sexual abuse in the way of sex trafficking, which we see is a problem in Mongolia. The primary Mongolian diet is meat and milk. There is excessive prostitution and begging, especially in the cities. And there's a very high rate of child poverty and child trafficking. So I always want to know how a situation comes about. So when I look at the history of Mongolia, I see that it was actually under a communist regime from 1924 to 1992. So that's a really large chunk of time. Now, as we looked in the beginning, Mongolia is situated right between communist Russia and communist China. So when there's a communist influence on a place, the first thing that happens is a complete fragmentation and separation from nature. And we see this in China with the Taoists um, and the attack on the sacred temples. But we see it within cultures as a complete dependency being created from the individual onto their government. And this is exactly what happened in Mongolia. So when these communist regimes come in, they institute extremely large and improbable quotas. So we saw this happen in Mongolia with animal agriculture, the quotas that were expected from the government of production for meat and milk and animal related products skyrocketed. And suddenly the herders had to deal with millions and millions of cattle, millions and millions of animals that they could not sustain, which was not sustainable. And this continued on. And when we saw the Soviet Union fall, pretty much all aid and support was just pulled out of Mongolia. So all these infrastructures that had been created that were completely unsustainable for the people and for the animals and for the land, um, they all just began to crumble. And so who steps in? Who always steps in when these types of things happen? When countries begin to crumble and they no longer can survive after in this case they come out of some sort of dictatorship well the world bank steps in and the world bank comes in and offers money which actually is just another form of crippling debt to further cripple a country that's already unable to stand up for itself so we see now that mongolia is almost half a billion dollars in debt 
to the World Bank. So then I just wanted to see how the World Bank relates to the Zuds. Are they in any way profiting off of Mongolia going through this? Well, it turns out that the World Bank is creating an initiative to offer insurance to these herders for their livestock um, dying. So that's very nice of them, don't you think? So then I decided, well, okay, Mongolia's closest neighbors are communist Russia and communist China. Is China involved in any way with the World Bank? Well, it turns out China is involved quite extensively with the World Bank since the 80s. And that might just be a coincidence, but I find it very interesting. So it turns out that Mongolia and China actually have a very strong relationship in that China needs Mongolia in order to use Mongolia as a corridor between China and Russia and in order to connect into China's supposed green Belt and Road Initiative. So the Belt and Road Initiative is China's resurgence of the old Silk Road. So they're connecting countries, they're up to 140, um, under the guise of trade, but really it's a debt system where just like the World Bank goes in and creates debt systems for countries in need, so too is China attempting to do the same thing with their Belt and Road Initiative. So it's interesting how close the World Bank and China have as a relationship and how closely their initiatives mirror one another. Something else I find very interesting is China's publicized geoengineering campaigns and the fact that they're doing these geoengineering campaigns with Russia. Now, typically, when I connect to animals involved in mass animal deaths, they speak to me of this unnatural feeling in the air, in the waters, in the soils, just like the cows in Mon Mongolia brought up. They told me that something felt off, that there was something very unnatural about the feeling. Well, I've come to realize that this most of the time denotes geoengineering or military experimentation. These global military experimentation campaigns are a physical manifestation of the spiritual energetic war that is unfolding around us. So the animals, which typically have one foot in one dimension and another foot in another dimension, are our bridge to start understanding these types of physical and spiritual global campaigns. We cannot help the animals humanity or ourselves if we do not understand the root of where these things are coming from. If we simply take the time to stop and speak to the animals and to the land, we will see that there is clarity, there are answers, and there are solutions to everything. Please join me now in this meditative prayer where we focus on Mongolia and send our healing love out to assist the cows in healing and the Mongolian people as a whole. Breathe into your heart, neutralize your emotions, hold space for love, and then bring the Mongolian cow up in your mind. Ask to connect with her. Now, call in the truthful cow frequencies sacred masculine and sacred feminine balance, compassion, caring, faith, joy, discipline, fun and strength. Hold this feeling. Now, see Mongolia in your mind's eye. See the land how it is now, used, unappreciated, wrecked by greed, dependent, victimized, exploited, beaten down, misused and corrupted. With your outbreath, blow a gold and platinum ribbon out of your mouth and watch as it begins wrapping the entire perimeter of Mongolia in a sparkling golden platinum light. With each outbreath, more and more gold and platinum ribbons begin to weave themselves around and through the land until finally Mongolia is completely held in a shimmering golden platinum basket of light. Hold this image. 
now. Ask the land to let go of the disrespect and of being forgotten. Ask that the land forgives, if she is able to, what has been done to her, to forgive those who have abused and used her. Feel as the golden platinum basket offers her healing and opens her heart once again to receive love. Feel as the air, waters, soils, fires, and directions of Mongolia become clear and at peace. Watch as they are made whole and return to their rightful state of balance and purity. See God, sovereign and free, written on the outside of the basket. Hold this image. Now, see yourself moving down so that you are inside the golden platinum basket. In here, everything is permeated with the healing, supporting golden platinum light. Now, watch how the people of Mongolia are affected by this loving light. See how it enters the cells of those ready for positive change. The light empowers their spirit, abolishing the remnants of oppressive socialist and communist ideologies and depression feel their hope return, their self-confidence and life's purpose reinvigorated. Watch as their dependency on faulty systems lifts, infusing them with the desire and need to be self-sufficient and sustainable in their truth. Feel how lack is turned to abundance, how Mongolian debt to the predatory ADB, IMF, and World Bank is forgiven. See the expulsion of alcoholism, prostitution, and begging from the normality of daily life. Self-respect returns, dignity returns. Watch as new possibilities of health and nutrition are opened up eliminating dependency on flesh and milk. Feel how the children regain their innocence and see those that harm and exploit the children sexually and physically cast out of Mongolia for the highest good of all. See all stomachs full and hunger obliterated. Watch how the golden platinum light releases famine pestilence and lack programs from the land and people. See how abundance and health fills every cell in its place. Hold this feeling. Now, bring the farmed animals of Mongolia up in your mind. Command that only that which resonates God sovereign free be allowed to continue within the perimeters of the golden platinum basket of Mongolia. See how the care for all animals in Mongolia becomes exemplary. Food becomes abundant, shelter warm and dry. Ask the animals to choose for themselves as to whether they wish to continue in the circumstances they are in. For those who do not, Ask their spirit guides, higher selves, and archangels to assist them in going to the perfect place for their highest good. See the remaining animals surrounded and protected by a shimmering golden platinum light, which infuses them with self-respect, dignity, and love. Hold this feeling. Now, call out the spirit of greed from its hiding place within the hearts of the Mongolian people. Ask for the spirit of kindness to fill their hearts in greed's place. Now, ask the animals to assist you in returning to the true Mongolian spirit, united in love to Mongolia. Watch as a beam of rainbow light flows from every Mongolian animal's heart space. See each rainbow find a Mongolian's heart to flow into. 
The rainbow light fills every Mongolian human completely, and they are returned the spirit of their ancestors with increased compassion, understanding, and connection to the natural world. Feel how the Mongolian spirit returns to the land, empowering and revitalizing her. The environment stabilizes, temperatures balance, the soils richen. Watch how disconnection and violence toward nature is abolished. Hold this feeling. Now, seal the golden platinum basket, which will continue to hold Mongolia in loving Christ's light under the law of one. Thank the cow and the land for connecting with you. And so it is, we seal our connection in love and unity.